because it is still came to our conclusion that Mizzou has not gotten their shit together. Amen. <laughs> we are going into March and we have not seen effective action from our administration. And so therefore we are gathered on this cold Thursday and thank you all for being out here today. To stand in solidarity of understanding there are voices that are here to be heard and the administration needs to be cognizant of all students of marginalized identities and the things they go through on this campus every day. Before I go any further, I want to say that we stand in solidarity with a brave Muslim student by the name of Fatma El Walid, who stood up and spoke out when she experienced acts of hate at office hours by a professor. We stand in solidarity with her of understanding that those are people who cannot even be here today because they're in fear of retaliation by their own administration. We will no longer be in fear, and we want to continue to remind the university that we will continue to have events, protests, march, until it is ingrained in all of their meetings that they will consider and continue to do true action and appropriate action for communities of color. Because racism lives within all communities of color. Furthermore, we stand in solidarity because our administration seems more interested in appeasing our legislators than the students who pay tuition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enrollment is down, mm -hmm. which impacts their budget and their funding, mm -hmm. but yet they are still trying to placate legislators instead of trying to provide comfort and security for their students. Why will this continue to stand out in this cold? For them to begin to understand what we need. Because we're being loud and clear. Last semester was definitely a testament to that. We've been very clear. And I know they say things like, oh, we need more time. We're done being patient. So today, with other communities of color, we stand in solidarity for everyone on our campus to know that we are not divided, but we are united. And we will continue to stand together until our university takes legitimate action in ensuring that all students of marginalized identity are able to feel safe, welcome, and included on this campus. I'm tired of being told that the university has given me money for me to come here. Well, damn, I wish this were true. And if, by the way, if you find this mysterious money, please contact me. <laughs> I'm tired of being here. To, I'm tired of being asked if my family's here illegally. I'm All tired right. of being people telling me hint that, that they can possibly let you know because of the color of their skin. All right. I'm tired of being asked how my wife was in Mexico. For fuck's sake, I was born in Chicago. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also half Cuban, by the way, so shit. I'm also tired of being reduced to a number and a stereotype. This is just one of many voices that continues to be left out of the narrative and when we talk about racism on our campus. I want to reiterate that there are people, even in this audience, who want to be up here to speak about the discrimination they face every day on this campus, but they are afraid. Why must students be afraid to speak out about what they are experiencing? I just want to make that clear, that there are students who want to be heard but are fearful of retaliation by this administration. And we stand in solidarity 
We didn't ask for the committee. We didn't ask for any new division. We are told through many different outlets, many different groups and movements, what we want on this campus, and it still continues to fall upon deaf ears by administration.
and that us standing here today is testament that we will no longer remain silent. And this is why, once again, we stand in solidarity with Fatma. How powerful for a student to speak up and say, this is wrong and I should not be subjugated to this treatment. It's sometimes challenging for people to understand racism and hate crime, because images that normally come to the mind is maybe a lynching in the Klan. But being told, go back where you came from, being called racial slurs, those are just as powerful, if not even more, and someone slapping us in the face. And how that impacts our ability to be successful students at our campus, which is our main job. Not to go to other meetings, not to do the job of administrators, because we all know we ain't paid what they're paid. Because they're not standing out in the cold, are they? Are they speaking up for us? No. no. We will no longer support any action that continue to perpetuate hate on our campus. We will move in solidarity as all of these communities will come together and stand united. Just take a moment and think about some of the experiences you had on this campus. And would you tell people in confidence who share similar identities as yourself that Mizzou is a safe place for them to be at? Once again, we are here to uplift and be in solidarity with all communities of color as we continue to shift the narrative of understanding that all voices will be heard, that these voices matter, and that we are in need of action by our administration. Once again, not these new positions that we didn't ask for. We didn't ask for any new people. Of what truly rule will restore our faith that we can call Mizzou a home. Because for some of us, this is the only home that we have. And to feel unwelcomed every day is an emotional burden that I would even wish upon my worst of enemies. Our pain is real. And it may be cold, but we are still angry and we are still tired. Remember that community of color, we are united and definitely not divided. Right? Right? right. right. We're united, not divided. And we will continue to support and uplift one another until hopefully one day all our chains can be broken. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love on each other. Support each other. Are you doing?